So it started actually before Mark got involved. It started with actually me wanting to do a movie because, full disclosure, my younger brother is one of the monastics. Uh, so he's two and a half years younger than I am. And he's the guy who plays the cello uh, when they play a Mozart string quartet. And he compares his teacher to Yoda from Star Wars in the prison scene. And when he ordained, I, I thought it was such a kind of dramatic and brave um, act that I thought there's a story here. And, but I didn't want to disturb his practice. I thought putting a camera in his face would be the last thing he needs. Um, and so I waited. And then in 2011, about three years after he ordained, the community, he and one of his elder brothers came and said, would you like to make a film about us? And I said, OK, that's different. And uh, if they're asking, I said, of course. I think it's an extraordinary idea. And they talked about a road movie touring America. And they said, it could be like a rock band movie, like a rock band documentary, <laughs> but with no sex and no drugs. <laughs> I said, that's a fantastic proposal. That's great. And then I asked Mark, who came on board as a producer initially. And then we just melded very quickly within the first few months into co-producing, co-directing. Um, yeah. So now a question uh, for you. Um, so we just heard that it was one of your idea for, for the film crew to co come along. So how, d how did it feel in your daily life? Did it change some of your daily life to have a film crew or did you just carry on as, as usual? I think not at all. I think um, Max and Mark were very skillful in order to uh, film us. They had to get to know us and we had to get to know them. And actually, we didn't care much about the film, to be honest. <laughs> but we heard he was his brother. So we were like, let's make him understand why he became a monk. So Max and Mark, actually, our hidden agenda was to make them practitioners. <laughs> and I think they succeeded, because to capture the moments, you have to be in the moment. So, and at the end, we really built a a relationship of community, of uh, family, spiritual family. And so the camera didn't become um, something that was in our way when we practiced, but it became very natural. And they were very mindful of capturing these moments, and they were very skillful. Thank you. Do we have any questions from the audience? Don't be shy and um, raise your hands. Are you all too mindful now? Yeah, oh, that's here. Thanks. Hello. Lovely film. Very meditative. Um, I wanted to ask, is um, the walking practice, is that something you do every day? And what does kind of a, a day at Plum Village look like? So we practice uh, walking meditation every day, like you see outside in the beautiful forests and nature. And uh, our intention is that every step uh, around the practice center is a step taken in mindfulness. So we try to connect with the earth, with our breathing, with every step. And uh, we use every distance, like say we're walking, you saw us getting into cars, we have to travel in cars too. So say we get out of the car and we walk towards a building, we try to take every step in mindfulness. And uh, our teacher uh, had a, uh, a practice recently. He gave us the challenge to not think while walking, just to walk, to fully occupy our body and enjoy every step. And so that becomes a daily practice, but also a daily challenge. And uh, when he would meet groups, like all of us gathered here tonight, he would say, this is something possible for all of us in our daily life. So when you're walking from your car to your office or from the bus stop to the office, it's possible to take every step in peace and in freedom. And that pretty much sums up the rest of the day too. <laughs> but we do a number of things in our day. We, we have sitting meditation, as you saw. We also have working meditation. We take care of everything ourselves as a community. So we are cooking, washing the dishes, but also we have uh, gardens, so we, do, we grow vegetables. Uh, we take care of everything uh, relating to like running a kind of mindfulness uh, oasis. 
you could even call it uh, mindfulness hospitality. So we also take care of all the guests that come to us. And uh, we have the opportunity to listen to teachings both from our teacher and, and other teachers. So we're quite an active and engaged um, practice center. And we, we, we practice what we call applied uh, mindfulness. So everything can be mindful, whether we are eating a, a rice cake <laughs> or whether we're pounding um, uh, peanuts or um, brushing our teeth, shaving our head. Every moment can be a moment of mindfulness. Any more questions? Uh, yes, right in the middle, please. Well, this is really aimed at the directors of the film. Um, it was truly a thoughtful film, very thoughtful, provoking film, emotional, if I may say. But I'd like to ask the directors, have they to embraced the philosophy of mindfulness as individuals and also within their filmmaking? Um, yes, uh, I think inevitably. I, I was, um, I said I was cu very curious from a sort of dramatic, almost professional point of view about my brother's choice of, of life at the beginning, but to a large extent I was also quite skeptical. I had many questions, put it that way. And as those questions gradually were answered, I became, I actually opened myself to the very, very simple message of Thich Nhat Hanh, which is kind of embodied by all of his students, my brother and, and the monastics with us tonight. And after a while, the principal messages, I ended up taking them in, almost like a, a process of osmosis. It was, it was actually, um, it, it is a process that bypassed thought and became very physical. And yeah, I'm not somebody who had great anger management issues or anything like that before, but certainly now I manage my stress very differently to the way I did a few years ago. Yeah, I would say that the experience <clears throat> was uh, deeply affecting. I think uh, before I started the movie, I would say that uh, I would allow myself to get quite caught up in the storm of my life. Um, and I think through the making of the film, slowly you learn to understand that it's not that the storm, well, through being with the monastics, that it's not that the storm goes away, that you actually learn how to stay in the center of the storm. So you don't get completely lost into a state of anxiety or stress or anger or fear. Um, that you create a level of slight detachment from it, even if you can buy yourself a second <laughs> between the emotional reaction to what you're experiencing, it allows for a more kind of uh, centeredness, more stability, more spaciousness in the day-to-day -day life of what we will experience in the modern world, which, from my point of view, um, both as a, a director in the film industry and as somebody who absorbs social media, is very intense. And um, it's, it's learning how to kind of stay in the center of that. And I think that's uh, the ultimate, that, that, that's definitely been the ultimate benefit. It's not like all the problems go away, but it's one's relationship to them just become better to manage. And I think as, uh, as film directors, you know, you're in a constant state of ups and downs. You know, one minute your film's gonna be greenlit, the next minute it's not gonna happen, or you can be the flavor of the month one minute and not the next. And one doesn't want their entire career, emotional life pegged to that, but how just to find a level of, of calmness regardless of whether you're the, you know, you're, the, you're the best or you're feeling like you're the worst. And um, I definitely think what we've learned through making this film has given us these vital tools within which to stay centered as we, as we move forward in the kind of films we want to make in terms of how we choose to approach it and who we choose to work with. And that's another thing that we learned about this idea about spirit of community. Um, you know, the decisions that you make about who you choose to be with, the degree to which, you know, you can connect and problems don't have to be nightmares. They can be challenges that we can overcome. And when you work with people with that similar um, point of view or similar feeling, it, it makes the whole, the community spirit makes that less of a lonely thing to overcome. That's just the beginning of really what we got from it. <laughs> 
I, I would. I think that really that's really important what you just said. I'd just add one thing that Mark and I, we occasionally just have to pinch ourselves and say, it will probably never get as good as this. We're with people we love who have embraced us, who are extremely calm, who live mindfully, who are completely open to us doing exactly to portraying the community as we want to, allowing us our, our res free responses as artists. And we just had to check in and say, this might never happen again, so let's enjoy it while it lasts. <laughs> so I think, <coughs> yeah, there is a question already here. Yeah. Is it on? Yeah. Thank you very much for a very beautiful film. Um, I found myself sitting here as a practitioner. I've been to Plum Village several times, and I've been to AAB several times, and I feel like I was seeing my, my community here. Um, my, my question, I also found myself watching the, the, the film as a lover of film, and, and um, my question is, I'm used to seeing Tich uh, Nartan as the sort of center of attention, and the teachings very directly um, portrayed, and here there was the artistic quality of, of um, the community of Thai, and I found myself experiencing the community in a way I've never had before. And I guess my question is something about how you related to the direct teachings of, of, of Thai and portraying the community. I'm not sure my question is so ripe, but maybe you can say something to that. Thank you very much, everybody. Well, one of the conditions for making the film was Thich Nhat Hanh essentially said to us, whatever you do, don't make it about me. Don't focus the film solely on me. Because for his point of view, we live in a society where we're putting too much faith and power into leaders. And we're, we're disempowering ourselves as community, as citizens, to really work out for ourselves what's right for us. And what he wants to do is pass on this idea to his monastic community that together as one, they're some kind of leader. So that was essentially one of the, 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 the conditions that were put upon us, which is a tremendous challenge as a filmmaker because we conven we're conventionally used to finding conventional narratives, identify two to three characters, you follow the narrative arc, and we're being told to look at a community who all seem to have the same fashion sense. <laughs> and the same hairstyles so where do you begin so that was the biggest thing is to spend time as much as we could to identify and learn about everybody and learn about their stories and think about how can we try and make a movie where we make the community the character of it and that's why we settled on this form of creating more of an experiential film where we try and transmit the experience that we had whilst being there to the audience and then taking it from that kind of level so and ultimately, that's what it is about when you're there. It's, it's just understanding how much time do we spend enjoying a sunrise or a sunset? How much time do we spend just being with ourselves and enjoying walking in the woods? You know, And it's just coming back to these basic, simple things that we can lose as life can become more complicated. So that's how we ended up really trying to bring that into the film itself. And also, our teacher, when met with uh, Max and Marx, told them that one of the mission of the film is to transform the theater into a meditation hall. So I think they succeeded in that. I th you're very right to point that out. It was, it was not at all a condition. It was more like an aspiration. It was put out to us almost like, how about? It's, uh, and we actually really responded to that as a, as a challenge creatively. And as Mark said, the non-traditional narrative meant that we actually had to embrace the idea of present moment through creating a series of present moments into which we hoped we could immerse audiences and then use sound to try and make those present moments really come alive and, and hopefully make it feel like you were, you were there experiencing them. We have time for one last question. Um, yes, please. Has Thich Nhat Hanh seen the film? And if so, what did he think of it? Yes. Um, just... I'd say it's about three weeks ago just in Bangkok. Three weeks ago, um, this film will also premiere in Bangkok. And our teacher is uh, residing at the Plum Village, Thailand, 
with our um, 200 monastic there. And he made his travels um, from our monastery all the way to Bangkok to enjoy the film. And uh, he really appreciated it. And before coming into the theater, he said, he told it, he pointed to an attendant, get some popcorns. <laughs> so that was a moment of happiness. And, uh, and even in the state where our teacher cannot speak, Our teacher um, in 2014 had a stroke. And so at this moment, he still cannot speak, but he is uh, very healthy. But when he was there, um, he was very present because you can feel his presence and you can feel his energy that is um, being produced by just him watching the film and meditating with us. And uh, at the end of it, he did a bow so I think that was a bow of appreciation and a bow of gratitude and a bow to share this to the world. And Max was there with him. Yeah, that was, um, that was wonderful. It, it really felt like it was coming full circle. I was a little, I was a few seats away from him and I was a little nervous to look at him because I was told he, he may have to leave for health reasons after 10 or 15 minutes. And 94 minutes later, he was still there, absolutely riveted to the screen. So. That, that that was uh, a very yeah a very very beautiful kind of way to to end this journey of course now the journey is just beginning in terms of audiences but uh, for us as filmmakers that was a wonderful moment um, the film is going to be released in the UK on the 5th of January by Thunderbird releasing so spread the word tell all your friends and uh, thank you all so much for being with us tonight thank you